could not live with your own failure. And where did that bring you? To new rock stars creating more theories! New rock stars has this video out, Thanos returning. I'm Ron Burgundy. Loki timeline and Endgame reset explained. Actually, you know, New Rockstars has been doing this thing, I think on their Discord, their Patreon, I believe, where they're doing watch alongs for all the Avengers movies, which, and then they're doing these breakdowns and I haven't seen any of those yet as I've been conflicted about whether or not we should react to those. Cause that sounds great. I've never actually reacted to any of their movie breakdowns. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. That would be cool. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. With our discussion on top of their 18 minute videos, oh, dude. we're looking at like a 45 minute video. <laughs> oh, yeah, <definitely. laughs> we can even break an hour. And I already have a theory about where this is because of Loki and the alternate timelines of the multiverse of it. Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss. And Thanos' days in the MCU appear to be over, but that was also our assumption with MCU villains like Red Skull, Zemo, and Loki, who appear Thanos to be is alive returning. again in his own Disney Plus series thanks to the Avengers Time Meddling and Endgame, resurrecting this god of mischief on his own branch timeline from 2012 onward, a branch timeline that, uh, oh yeah, also includes an <laughs> alternate Thanos perfectly alive and well, still on his quest for Infinity Stones. Because now that we're in a Marvel Cinematic Multiverse, no one dies and everyone lives on forever and ever. Eggs. So whatever issues Loki you could just keep in repeating the, the Infinity Saga. Yeah. <laughs> just just slightly different Earth details. The Avengers is gonna want him to answer for his failure. Thanos is like the MCU's Tony Soprano. You can't get away from that guy. He's gonna find it and choke you to death while touring colleges with his daughter. But as I have been stuck quarantined in this blue dungeon rewatching the Infinity Which Saga, daughter? I realize that Thanos' timeline from 2012 through Endgame is very mysterious. If Marvel ever wanted to explore this alternate Thanos backstory, there are a lot of questions that they would need to answer to let us of break course. down Thanos' There's new more timeline. Stuff. There's prequels you can put him in. game opened up the MCU in all kinds of confusing ways, but one of the biggest points of confusion came up with the alternate 2014 era Thanos. This is technically the one who died at the end of the film. When present day Nebula and Rhodey go back to 2014 to get the Power Stone for Morag, we check in briefly with Nebula and Gamora from that point in history. They're mid-battle and the endgame script actually revealed their victims as Corbinites, the horse-faced race of Beta Ray Bill, suggesting the planet below them might be Corbin. Anyway, Anyway, 2014 Gamora and 2014 Nebula have an interesting exchange. Father wants us back on the ship. Interesting. He's found an infinity stone. Where? On a planet called Morag. Father's plan is finally in motion. One stone is in six, Nebula. It's a start. This exchange is setting up the history we saw in Guardians of the Galaxy, set in 2014, when Thanos sent Ronin after the Power Stone. But the confusing part is they specifically say Thanos finding the Power Stone is his first stone. That appears to contradict the events of the first 2012 Avengers movie, in which Thanos sent Loki to Earth for the Tesseract, which contained the Space Stone. And we assume that Infinity Stone was the whole point of Loki's attack on Earth. Additionally, Loki's scepter at that mm. point contained another Infinity Stone, the Mind Stone. And the headcanon of many mm. of us was that Thanos lent Loki one Infinity Stone so that Loki could Marvel's use it to go not get a second perfect. Infinity Stone. You know, and essentially an Infinity Stone double down. But uh, one that backfired. But Endgame declares Thanos' first location of a stone two years after that, in 2014. So the only way this makes sense is if Thanos in 2012 did not yet know the Tesseract and Loki's scepter contained Infinity Stones. In this case, you can imagine Thanos huh. searching the galaxy for all kinds of powerful mystical weapons, but not sure which of those weapons contained Infinity Stones and which of them didn't. So this interpretation of what Thanos knew and when he knew it actually helps explain the confusion around the gap in Thanos' stone quest timeline and why people like Thor didn't do more to stop him. So remember, after Guardians, Thanos' stone quest really kicked into gear in the post credit scene after Age of Ultron. Tron, which showed him with an empty infinity gauntlet. Fine. I'll do it myself. Thanos doesn't appear again until the post credit scene of Thor Ragnarok, catching Thor with his pants down. But in Age of Ultron, <laughs> Thor experienced a vision showing him the Infinity Stones. That movie ended with him supposedly setting off in search of them. So during that search, why didn't he run into Thanos? Why didn't he at least know of what Thanos was doing? Why was he so surprised to see Thanos in Ragnarok in Infinity War? Our friend AJ Essel, however you say it, brought up this question on Discord, which all of you can actually join that Discord by becoming a patron, by the way. And now there are two points to make here. First, in Ragnarok, Thor does hint at some general unrest around the galaxy. But then I decide to go out there and investigate. And what do I find with the nine realms completely in chaos? 
Enemies of Asgard assembling, plotting our demise. Thor's implication here is that Odin, or should we say Loki masquerading as Odin, is shirking his responsibility to provide order and security across the realms. And as a result, all kinds of enemies of Asgard are making moves. Enemies like Surtur, like Hela, and sure, like maybe a big purple asshole named Thanos. He has, over the past couple decades, gained a reputation <laughs> as a psychopath eco-terrorist, amassing an army, going planet by planet, calling them by half, but at the end of the day, just one bad actor in a galaxy full of assholes. People like Thor might know who Thanos is, but he would have no reason to know that Thanos' real plan was to find six stones and carry out that dark vision with just a snap. Now, the second point is that Thanos with that empty gauntlet, I'll do it myself, that scene didn't necessarily take place right after Age of Ultron in 2015. If you think about it, it couldn't have, because in Infinity War, we learned that Thanos got that gauntlet after sacking it of Lear, the forge that Thor was shocked to find destroyed in Infinity War years later. Nidavellir is the primary armory for Asgard. If it got attacked, it would be like if a U.S. military base got hit and some nukes went missing, people would be freaking out. The only way Nidavellir could have been attacked without Thor knowing is if it happened during the events of Ragnarok, when Thor was distracted, stranded on Sakaar, ah, fighting Hela on Asgard. Interesting. So that would put Thanos' attack of Nidavellir around 2017, and then he would put on the gauntlet and go after the Power Stone on Xandar. But why does Thanos wait that long? Why doesn't he attack Nidavellir earlier, after Ronan let him down in Guardians of the Galaxy in 2014? Well, we get this answer in Thor Ragnarok, Odin. Odin is the key here. He is the badass power check of all the Nine Realms, but his death in Ragnarok is what triggers all of the chaos afterwards. It allows Hela to return, and it allows Thanos to finally make his move. Many believe that the additional gotcha. right-handed gauntlet mm -hmm. in Odin's hey. vault wasn't just a jokey meta easter egg, it was a relic belonging to Odin from his own past stone quest. Like, imagine Odin as a younger Asgardian oh, god, was once on his own quest to gather all six infinity stones and become master of the universe. Master of the universe? But on Vormir, he was hit with a pang of guilt for having to sacrifice the one he loved the most, his daughter Hela. And in that misery, he decided to give up on the stone quest and scatter the stones he had gathered across the galaxy and therefore would stop anyone else from attempting to follow in his footsteps. And that lasted until his death in 2017. Mm. Think about it, 2017 was also mm. shortly after the Time Stone was used on Earth. Before Doctor Strange became a mystic warrior, the Time Stone remained relatively hidden in the Eye of Agamotto, rarely, if not never, used. But then Strange changed that all by using it to defeat Dormammu, an event with cosmic reverberations mm. that could have put a big target on Earth. So in 2017, all the pieces are now in place for Thanos. He knows which of the many powerful items he sought are Infinity Stones, Odin's death over opens the door for him to attack Nidavellir to get his own gauntlet, and then Thanos heads to Xandar for the Power Stone. All the while, Thor is too busy getting a haircut from Stan Lee to know what's happening. Now, this used to just be a past history that no longer really mattered to the MCU, but now that stories like Loki are taking place in alternate branch histories, mm. this Thanos stone quest is still playing out in the background of that branch history. It can still influence and collide with Loki's journey. Thanos remains a deadly threat on a mission with huge cosmic implications to whatever universe he's alive in. So don't sleep on the Mad Titan because even if two versions of them are dead, there are infinite more of them to snap your neck. Follow along our Infinity Saga rewatch by joining our Discord by becoming a patron of the Avengers to do. Follow me, Follow me, Rockstar. Again? He keeps coming back. We already did the one reality where we win. Well, if this isn't an example of a video going down a path that was different than I anticipated, I don't know what is. Yeah, this is thick. It just opened up a whole new can of worms and questions. There are some theories here that I really did like a lot, especially the one with Odin. He has this whole history and lineage explaining why he truly left Hela behind. He set out on his own quest to find uh, the Infinity Stones and his encounter with Vormir put him in this feeling of despair and so he decided to spread out the stones uh, across the galaxies and such. I think is a really cool one. This might sound silly, but my thing against the whole idea of that not just being a meta joke with Hela pushing over the gauntlet, that it was actually Odin's old gauntlet. My argument against that would be that thing is massive. <laughs> it, it would and be it, way bigger. It, yeah. <laughs> and it seems to only fit on Thanos's hand. Like that looks like it's designed specifically for Thanos's hand. So I would still take it as just a joke unless Odin has some ability to make his hand grow massive into this <laughs> giant arm fist the size of Thanos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's my one argument against that theory yeah. is that doesn't look like it would fit him. And if, if Tony Stark is able to develop some type of technology that would 
be able to fit onto his hand or Hulk's hand, I bet that they would be able to figure out yeah. how to make one for Odin specifically for his hand. Especially yeah. if the gauntlets are made in their own intergalactic smelting plant. You know? Yeah. It seemed like that this whole theory that was being posed here of Thanos returning, it seemed like we were getting two theories. One theory was we could just explore the timeline gap, like really get a chance to see what Thanos was doing, exploring some of the wars that were taking place and such. Maybe some of the other things he searched for that weren't Infinity Stones. Yeah, kind of getting like sideline plots or whatever. Maybe not in a movie, but in the shows, uh, especially with dimension traveling, universe traveling with WandaVision and more time traveling with Loki. Loki. So then you could really get some fun cameos or storylines to explore with Thanos. I guess, uh, I don't know if it would be shoehorned or something personal for Loki specifically. My question comes down to the, the time traveling and, and the timeline stuff that we saw happen in Endgame. From my understanding, and I know the time travel thing has been a little bit difficult for people to truly wrap their heads around. For the most part, I got it. Like, I didn't, I never had a difficult time hopping onto it. But then when I'm thinking about this storyline with this Loki that we're going to be exploring in the series, that's where I start getting a little bit confused then. Loki went to Earth upon Thanos' orders. Was that the Thanos that died at the end of Endgame, though? Mm. Right? Is, isn't that what... It was implying that it was that same Thanos. So would that Loki was... have anything to worry about? Would there be a reason for Thanos to go after Loki? That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I guess in that arrangement, it wouldn't be. Is the Loki show going to be taking place around the Loki who escapes during the time travel, you know, scenario in the base, uh, the, the yeah. lobby of the building? Yeah, it would make sense that Thanos would have some kind of involvement. Okay, see, the, that's, that's where the time gaps start coming into play because Guardians of the Galaxy was 2014, right? Yeah. And that's a 2014. Thanos who died at the end of Endgame. So the 2012 Thanos, yes. the one where, the, which is 2012 Loki, which is the Loki we're focusing on. Yes. Is that 2012 Thanos going to be going after Loki? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. You're messing up my plan. That's yeah. actually a really good uh, question to ask, and I figure it could certainly happen, and I feel like that would definitely create an event that people need to go to Disney Plus to check out. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it would be smart to do yeah. that, I guess, although very expensive. <laughs> if Thanos is still in the search for the stones, but then again, that 2014 Thanos does go to our timeline, our Earth, because we have acquired all the stones and he has a line about, you took care of all the hard work for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the trouble with these theories, man. They twist the thing <laughs> yeah. around, they make you wonder stuff. And then I'm over here going, well, if, if Odin made this big vie for the stones a while ago, would, would Thanos have heard about that? Why, why wouldn't he just come and attack Odin? Because yeah. like, even if Odin holds the realms together, I don't think Thanos is just gonna be like, well, I can't beat this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like the mysticism of that, I do. Uh, but yeah, I, I kind of figured you're like Thanos wouldn't care. <laughs> I think that you can still get Thanos to return in some fashion, whether it be the way how Ronan returns in Captain Marvel. I feel like though, if you have a Thanos returning, that they're gonna wanna make it something more meaningful and impactful than Ronan have what they do with him in Captain yeah. Marvel. You know, yeah, they're yeah. gonna want to make him a probably a prevailing character, but I don't think it would happen for a while, especially because there was all that hype of we got a verse Thanos and then Thanos is defeated. Yay, we won. I, I feel like it'd be a while longer, even though everything's been pushed because of the virus. It's lots to wrap your head around, but the the idea of Thanos returning is a very plausible idea because uh, it could just be a Thanos from a different timeline or something like that. My theory is they're gonna bring him back for like a, an El Camino style one scene scene where it's just him talking to Loki, <laughs> you know, and influencing him to go get the stone. Yeah, yeah something yeah. like that. What do you think about this theory? Do you want to see Thanos return, even though it's a different Thanos timeline? Leave your thoughts down below. These timelines have everything. You can bring back Iron Man now, technically speaking. <laughs> you start a whole new Iron Man franchise. Yeah, you really can. <laughs> well, what if this thing was a little different? <laughs> subscribe to The Real Rejects. Click that notification bell to get notified whenever we got a new video up. Also, subscribe to new rock stars. Last but not least, <laughs> Anissa Oliva, mm. I just want to take time out to give you a sincere shout out. I want to say thank you so much for being you. The way you chime in on our live streams, the way you interact with us at Patreon, and then we talk on social media from time to time. You've been nothing but 
an incredibly sweet, genuine, loving human being to both John and I. Oh, yeah. And I am forever grateful to have you in our lives. And I hope one day we can meet in person. And that way John can uh, pump you up at the gas station. That's right, man. <laughs> we're gonna get those matching I tattoos. I couldn't stay this sincere. I couldn't do it, I'm sorry. <laughs> right over each of our hearts, we're gonna get a little, you know, the gas light that comes on in your car. It's what we're yeah. all gonna get just to commemorate this. But also, seriously, too, I mean, like, the, the work that you do is really important as well, especially now, and I hope that you're staying safe, and thank you for, you know, helping the yeah, world. absolutely. You know? Thank you, Anissa. Be safe, take care of your family. We will see you one day soon. Premium unleaded.